Barbara. And I'm Karen, and we're the Sync Sisters. This is our tech bit on the iOS 9 update. iOS 9 came out on Wednesday, September 16th. And when you first download it, it doesn't seem like much is different, but as you explore it, you see there's quite, quite a lot to it. And that's what we're going to cover today. One big thing is there's a lot of behind the scenes updates to the power and the everything of a system. The one great thing when you notice when you download is that it's smaller in size. Sometimes right. with downloads, there have been things where uh, you couldn't download it because you didn't have space on your device. Right. So that hopefully that's not a problem. Physically smaller. Yep. It's much faster and much more responsive than iOS 8. Uh, there's improved security and kind of a fun one. They've gone with a new font, San right. Francisco, which, you know, is fun. So we're going to get right into some of the other updates now. All right, let's take a look at Apple's new app with iOS 9 called the News App, and it's here on the page. It's red, and it has a mock-up of a newspaper on the front. This app, um, I'm going to take us to the favorite section here along the bottom, the second item in, because this is what it, where it starts out, it asks you what things you like. It's sort of like Flipboard app, if you've ever used that, where it'll say, have topics and specific websites and publishers that you can choose to tell it your favorites, Okay. Um, if we go to the For You section on the left at the bottom, it's going to show you the articles that fit within the things that you've told it you like. And, um, and I, I would, oh, sorry, yeah, I would ahead. imagine as with a lot of things in technology today, the more you use it, it's going to repopulate right. things that are tailored for you. Right. When you read articles, there's a heart button, a favorite button that you can use that'll not favorite it for you, but it just tells Apple News that you like that, and so you want to see more things like that. Now, publishers can um, just serve up, they could just serve up the information the way it is, or they can specifically write for this app, like National Geographic does, and you can see that we have different typefaces. It's all fermented, really um, beautiful, the way that they wanted us to see it. So you read through your article. You can share the article up at the top right here. You get the share, the favorite, and the save button, which allows you to save it for looking at later. Um, you can always go into your favorites and edit them if you, don't, if you want to take one out and you don't want it anymore. Or you can go to Explore and you can add favorites. You also can search for whatever you like, of mm -hmm. course. And um, you can look at the saved articles or your history uh, of what you've oh, read. Right, right. Yeah. It's a fantastic app. I think you'll really enjoy um, working with it. It just brings all the news sources together in one place. That's really awesome. love it. I love yep. it too. So for the Notes app in uh, iOS 9, they basic, it's basically like a brand new program because the Notes app was very, very simple. There wasn't much to it. And so now they've really given it some nice features. So let's go ahead and look at that. If I open it up and I'm here in a note, one of the, the first things is that you have finally some formatting capabilities uh, to do to your type. So I'm gonna select this word here. And once I bring that up, you can see uh, these different things that you can do to the type as usual. But here we have B-I-U, which is bold. You know, bold, underline, or italic. So that's kind of a nice formatting that you can do. Some other formatting you can do, you can find down here on the keyboard. Oh, that's and nice. you see these little icons here, and this is something called keyboard shortcuts, which is new with um, nine also. Mm -hmm. And they will be different from program to program what the shortcuts are. Right. But in this program, there's one here which is this A type. So if I click on that, uh, tap on that, you can see you can do some more formatting with some different kind of bullets too. And then also over here, you see this little circle. If I click on that, you can see oh, nice. that it gives you a, I'm going to unselect my type, uh, get, gives you a circle which creates a checklist for you. So you nice. can create checklists in here now, which is really nice. That's great. And then over here, you can cut, copy, or paste. If I go, oops. You okay. just paste it, yeah. Well, you know what? I didn't have anything selected. Right. Select all here, this little icon. Now I can cut, copy, or paste. Isn't that great? I know. <laughs> Such a fundamental Apple oh, thing. To think it's been beginning. missing yeah. for so long from the iPad. Yeah. So anyways, that's some good formatting for you. Another nice thing, well, as long as I have the keyboard up here, let me show you some new things about the keyboard. One thing, now I have the shift key down, so that means that it's um, uppercase. If I 
do lower, it actually shows the lowercase Isn't letters. That nice? That's always so yep. confusing. Yep, that's and then a way nice. to go around and put yourself where you want in the title. Well, this is already selected. Why you? <laughs> is to take two fingers and hold, and you see now. Look, I'm oh, you're moving, moving the, the cursor beam. around. Moving the blinking cursor. Yep. That is fantastic. So those are just that's that'll be in any app. Some new keyboard. Only on the iPad, however. Oh, that feature right. is only on the iPad. Right. right. Yep. Right. Okay, so I'm going to get out of here. Now, another great thing is you can add, if you look down here, the keyboard, or the, there's a little camera icon. It's kind of hard to see because they're kind of a pale tan. Yeah. There's a camera and there's a little scribble line. So you can um, add photos or drawings that you make to your notes. So if I tap on the camera, you can see I could either go into the photo library and choose a picture. So if I tap on that, or you can take a picture. I'm just going to go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or I can whoops, just take a picture with my iPad or phone, whatever I'm using. Yeah, that's fabulous. Yeah. So here, this little scribble is kind of fun. If I tap on that, it brings it up, and you can see I've got some brushes and some different colors uh, to draw, which yeah. would be, you know, if you're out, maybe you want to uh, sketch a building or you know whatever you want to sketch a run layout or right yeah something okay. you want to remember so you've got sort of different options to work with it's great yep nice and you thing. can have all that mixed media in one note you know, scribbles pictures oh sure text checklists yeah you can type. write some type about something and then do a little sketch of it and right and a little checklist right sure so it's a great feature yeah great new features they've added so they've really updated notes now we're going to talk about Apple Pay a little bit, which um, and and Wallet, which has changed. Um, used to be called Pass. Used to be called Passbook and Apple Pay in your settings. So if we go into settings, you're now going to see that it says Wallet and Apple Pay, which makes more sense. It's Passbook, you know, it's your wallet. It holds your credit cards, and now they've added the ability to also add your um, rewards cards, you know, like your Walgreens balance card and things like that, to the app. Um, I don't have my credit cards in here now, but you know, you go to add credit card, just like before you're able to scan the credit card or go ahead and add it in. The best feature about this, I think, because I use Apple Pay a lot and I like it, but when you get up to the register, you just bring your iPhone out and it would pop up. But if it went away and you didn't act on it, you didn't have a way to invoke it. Now they've added the feature from the lock screen, double click on the home button and it'll bring up Apple Pay. And you can that's pick great. the credit card or rewards. So you can bring you it want. up when you want it. You can bring it up when you want right. it. And that's what makes most sense. Other, other times people were walking by a register and they weren't even paying and it would come up. We don't want that to happen. No. So you now have to invoke it, which makes sense. So that's going to be a really nice feature. Well, good. Now, another app that got updated was the Maps app. So I'm going to go back out here. Now for the maps, um, Apple Maps, there's not a lot of updates, but they're really nice. So I'm gonna tap on maps. The first one is transit. Yay. It will show uh, subways, buses, trains, and everything. For select cities right now. Oh, of course, okay. they start just with a few and then they go out, right. you know, build up. So I'm gonna, um, unfortunately our city doesn't have it yet. Oops, let me load the map. I'm gonna zoom out. Very slow. <laughs> okay, that's gonna. There we go. Now we're getting out into the states. Yeah, now I'm gonna go over to New York or somewhere that has transit. There we go. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Click on New York, and now look. This is kind of neat. You can yeah. take a tour of the three a three D tour of the city. Right, and it'll right. now show you the little three D icon next. Right, to the you can see these it. this little tiny. It's hard to see, but it's there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to go zoom in. Yeah. Just zoom into New York. <laughs> <laughs> and you can start to start to see. see yep. Yeah. You can already see the transit lines. The transit lines. So buses, subways, yep. trains. Right. And it will have delays and, you know, things like that, updates like that. Which is great. Right. If you're waiting for a bus and it isn't right. there, a subway, it'll tell you uh, when it's coming. So if you live in an area that has transit, that's awesome. Now I'm going to go back over here and a feature that's really nice is nearby. So if I click up in the search, search bar. bar. Oops. 
I didn't really mean to do that. Okay, there. there we go. Now you can see these that come up, these little icons. There's food, drinks, shopping, travel, services, fun, health, and transport. These are going to show you things that are nearby. If I tap on one, it's going to bring up a subcategory. So I tapped on foods and oh. it brought up popular restaurants, groceries, Around desserts, bakeries. Nice? I think we want desserts, right? Yeah, let's go for desserts. Then it's going to show me a list of yummy places and show me on the map oh, where they are. So that's great. That is fabulous. Yeah, so nearby is a really nice feature of maps. I love that. They're really improving it. The next thing we're going to take a look at is iCloud Drive. Um, and iCloud Drive before only worked within Apple apps on the iOS devices. You could save things to your Apple Drive. I'm going to bring up the iCloud Drive app, which looks like the iCloud. And when it comes up, it's great. It has all your folders um, and allows you access to these documents from your iOS devices now. It's really just playing catch up, I think. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> um, Dropbox, Dropbox or Google Drive. Or Google Drive or yeah. OneDrive, you've been able to do this before. So now, even though um, I may not have um, a particular app on my device, I can still get to these things and I can email them to somebody if I needed to. That's happened to me before I'm out and about and I need to email someone a file, but it wasn't one of the core Apple app files, right. I couldn't do it. Now I can. That's awesome. I can pick on one and share it. So iCloud Drive is great. The updates are awesome. Yeah. Suri has been greatly improved with uh, iOS 9. She's smarter and much more responsive and really uh, intensified her searching abilities too. Right. So let's take a look at her because they really, they've updated the interface, if you can see which I think is kind of cool and fun. And it matches the Apple Watch now. If you have an Apple Watch, that looks the same. Right. Ooh, she's talking. And she's copying everything we're right. saying. There we go. Okay. She's not going to understand. So I'm going to get out of Surrey there. Uh, and one thing that is really nice that you can do is use Surrey to search your photos now. She can find photos for you, and it's quite exactly. complex the way she can do it. Let me show you. Surrey, show me all my photos from last March. There we are. Oh, isn't that great? Yes. That's really nice. Or if you wanted to find oh. all your photos from a specific yep. date yep. or location, date, right? Date, location, yeah. year. Isn't yep. that great? It is nice. It's a fun, fun thing. Or, or by album. You know, oh, if you had an album too. created, you could say, show me, oh, that's cool. you know, Kellen's eighth birthday party. Oh, that's but, cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I really wonderful feature is called Surrey Suggestions. When you're on the home screen, if you swipe left, Ooh, nice. it's going to bring up Surrey Suggestions, it's called. And she's going to show you um, applications that you've had open. For some reason, we have a search. Let's cancel our search, and then I think it'll... There oh, we go. There we, we go. We're in a search. Right. So. She's going to show you uh, your most recent people that you've contacted, you know, by email or phone or, you know, text, whatever. And then the most recent apps you've used. Mm -hmm. uh, then she brings up the nearby, which is a great feature. From the apps? Yep. Yeah, that's an awesome feature. I've been using that a lot. And then she'll show you your news from your news app. So it's a Isn't handy little thing. I've heard people say that they don't even use the home screen anymore. People have been beta testing oh, Nine for sure. a while and had it for a while. Because, you know, you usually are just using a few common apps over and over and you right. know you can get to your common you know your most used contacts right. so it's sort of a handy way to collect everything for you isn't that great yeah that's a really nice picture it is and um her search is she also searches now um your apps your text and your contacts and your mail deep searching yeah deep yeah. searching yeah so if i do a siri search and the word dog search you're gonna see now. Look, it showed you your top hits, oh, which is a note. The it note we created read, earlier. It's a dog in it. Yeah. Then it's gonna show you your music that has dog in it. Your contacts. contacts. You know this. Oh, happy days, doggy oh, cam. Oh, and very cool because this contact right here doesn't have dog in his name, but guess what? In the notes, I have oh, information yeah. about his dog. Mine brought up brought up one um, that's, that's a guy's so cool. name, but it's. Um, 
dog is in his email address. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. That's so cool. And some notes with dog, yeah. reminders with dog. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. See, Messages. I thought this is a good one to do on your iPad because you're so into your two golden retrievers. <laughs> right. Dog is a good bird to pick. <laughs> and then you can, you know, obviously search the web and you can see you can search the app store or you could search maps. That's so great. Surrey searching has really gotten a lot better with mine. That's really nice. One fun feature is Siri reminders, and it works about it works off the word this. So any time you ask her to remind me about this, it's referring to what you have open on your screen. So um, mail. Let's oh, go into yeah. mail. If I go into mail, and I say, remind me about this tomorrow at ten. Creating a reminder. Okay, I'll remind you. Excellent. Yes. And there's a little mail reference, so when you go into it, you'll, you could just go right back to where you were. That is really nice. Yeah. Now let's just take a look at a couple of settings that Siri that they have um, included new settings for Siri. So if we go down here, uh, General and Siri, um, there are a couple of things. One is um, the ability to control voice feedback, and I think this is a really nice feature because what this says here now is that. Siri's always on, but you can control that with your mute setting or your ringer button if it's on the phone. So that if your ringer is turned off or your mute is on, she's never going to talk. So even though you can still talk to her, she's going to just show you things on the screen and type. So that's a really nice feature. A lot of people um, had issues with that where Siri would just all of a sudden randomly start talking and yeah, you didn't like that. Or you'd hold down the <laughs> button too long, things like that. Exactly. And then another thing to note, if you've been using the allow the Hey Siri feature that came out in the last version, where if if your phone or your device is plugged into power, you can just say Hey Siri to bring her up. Um, in the new update, they default that to being off. So if you're wondering why it's not working, you got to come in here and turn it back on. Then All you'll right. be able to do Hey Siri. And this is new too. It's a setup. They're going to have you say, hey, Siri, and have you say a couple of different things to her so they don't get it wrong and use somebody else's command. So, oh, okay. you know, it's going to understand yeah. who you are. That's great. So that's a really nice feature. And that's why they turn it off because they want to go through that setup and have you tell them what oh, your voice is like. Good idea. Yeah. So now we're going to talk about, I think, one of the most exciting things to come to the oh, iPad yeah. in a long time. And yes. this is called Slide Over. Currently, whenever you're working in an app, you're working in that app, and then you leave it to go to another app, and there's no connection between multiple apps. Now, with Slide Over, you can. So I'm going to open mail. Let's say I'm doing a mail, an email, and I want to check a, date. a calendar date. Yeah. If you slide from the right. Oof. Now, it's bringing up my calendar program right now because this is the last thing I was in, okay? If I slid over and it brings up this third screen, if there's a little gray kind of handlebar up here. Kind of like the notifications tab. Right. And the, if I go like this, I'm just oh, sliding down. So now I can see all my apps and I could tap on, bring up any app with still the, seeing that. I haven't left it, right? And then when you tap back here, what happens? Does it go away? Yep, it, yeah, goes, it goes away. away. So it's just a slide over. Right. Yep. But now this is available. This feature is on both of the Air iPads, so nothing before an Air. The Mini 2 and up, and of course the Pro that will be out in November. Something, if you have a Air 2 or a Mini Pad 4 and up, you can have another great feature, which if I do this slide over again, and then say, I, but I want to work in both. If I press and hold it and pull it over, oh, cool. now I've got both programs open and I can work in both of them at the same time. Oh, and now you just brought up a yet another feature. <laughs> yeah, you can look at. I'm so smart. You clicked in the email. <laughs> you, you just brought that up seamlessly. What she did was in. She was in mail and tapped on the link in the mail, and it brought us into Safari. Okay. Oh right. But now we want to go back to mail, and before you'd have to quit out of Safari oh, and go back right. into mail. But now look in the upper left hand corner. It says back to mail. Back and to if you mail. Tap on it's going to take you back to mail. Now so, we're in the mail program. Right. So anytime an app takes you into another app, like maybe you're in the calendar and you click on an address, it takes you into maps. You're going to see up in the upper left-hand corner back to whatever app yeah. you were in. 
really nice feature because that is you, great usually you don't want to leave it permanent sort of integration between apps is just skyrocketed with this update it really has it yeah really has. Yep. it is fun i really yep. i i've already been using the slide over and the split screen and it's great what i love fun, it what a fun feature right and there's one more kind of fun little feature like that oh yeah the picture in picture feature so now we're going to get out of these um, apps and we're going to go into the video app apple's video app if you are in the video app watching a video, let me bring it up by itself, and we're gonna hit play here on the aristocrats. <laughs> um, if you are in Apple's video app or FaceTime, you get this little icon in the lower right-hand corner. It's kind of hard to see, yeah. but it's like shrinking the picture down. So I'm gonna shrink it down, and now my video is running. And now I could like quit that program, and I could, you know, let's say I want to go back in the mail and type an email while I'm watching a movie. I can right. do that. Or if I'm FaceTiming with somebody, I want to check something in a program, I can do that. I can pick this up and move it around wherever it's convenient for me as I'm working in my mm -hmm. uh, background. So it's a really nice feature. Yeah. I bet sports fans would like that. They could keep their eye on the game. Keep while your eye on the stuff. game while you're doing stuff. Yep, it's really awesome. Now, you have to have an iPad Air or later or an iPad Mini 2 or later to take... Um, control this and I I kind of hope that they expand this and people like YouTube will right. incorporate this and other video app programs like Netflix because it would be nice to be able to do it sure. anytime you're watching right now it only video. works with Apple's video Apple's or video FaceTime program or FaceTime right great exactly okay let's take a look at another um, enhancement that they made to the photos app which is really fun um, or nice we would go into the photos app what you're gonna notice is some new folders Selfies. Oh, who doesn't oh, love them? Who doesn't love selfies? <laughs> There's one of me and my dog the other yeah, day. Yeah. Um, see, great, you and the dog. It's I, me see? and the dog. <laughs> You're right. But it's great. It's going to put all the pictures that were taken with the forward facing camera in a folder called selfies. That is so great. It's really awesome. Um, it's also going to give you a folder for screenshots. Oh, how do you take a screenshot? Well, you take a screenshot by holding down the home button and the power button at so, the same time. Do it. Go ahead oh, and do it. it. It'll blink. It blinks, and now you know oh, you've done it, and put it, it puts there. it right in the folder. So here are all the screenshots that have been taken on my on this mm -hmm. device in, in itself. So that's a nice feature. Another um, really awesome feature, which everybody's going to love, is the ability to select multiple multiple pictures, pictures at, at a once. time. Yep. So, so we select tap mode. on select before you used to have to tap on every one you wanted. Now you can tap and hold. That's awesome. That's great. And you can still do non-contiguous ones. You just pick your finger up and continue on. Right. Awesome. Really great that feature. That is great. Yeah, people are really looking for that. There's also, if you go into settings, there's also, depending on which um, camera you have, which device you're using, you may see that you'll have some different speeds for video. Okay. So that's what they've added with, with photos. The other thing that's pretty nice, and we're going to take a look at some miscellaneous things here. Let's go back into the settings app. And, you know, if you were wondering where a certain setting was, I can't remember where to find that location thing, and I'm not sure what it's called. Which is so easy to do because sometimes they're so nested yeah. in each other. You can't remember where is usage. Exactly, exactly. So scroll down. And at the very yep. top of settings, like in the mail program, bada -bing, reminds bada -boom. me. boom, right. We can go in here and just type in location, and it's going to show me all the places where location shows up. In settings. In Perfect. settings. Yep. So that's really nice. That's Another thing to note um, is that all these things work on the iPhone, except for the few that we've shown you that only work with the iPad. Mm -hmm. We're just showing them on the iPad because it's a bigger bigger piece of real estate here. To like at. the slide over and the split view only work on the and iPad. And the picture in picture. Those are the only iPad only, um, well, we've talked about a few of them. Yes. We told you that as we went along. Now, as long as you're in settings, do you want to show them that they are new wallpapers? Oh, right. Oh, right. This is fun too. Um, if we go into wallpaper, Apple has updated and change the wallpaper, the stills, and so got you've some got new wallpaper. some random feathers, yep. <laughs> some planets, some starbursts. Uh, what I don't really like is they take away the old ones. I know. You know well, they they figure people them. are done with them, right? I guess, I guess. <laughs> I just, it's kind of I think most people use photos for their backgrounds anyway. And now, as long as we're in settings, I'm gonna show you a new feature with the battery. 
This I is tap on that, feature. low power mode. And what this does is if you're using your device and it gets below 20%, it'll give you a message to say, do you want to go into low power mode? And it, what it does is it restricts things that drain your battery. Right. Like background app fresh and mail fetch and automatic downloads, things like that. So you can conserve your battery. Right. So it'll just automatically um, disable those features and allow you to... Um, Right. run longer on that lower battery. It's also, you can come in here and turn it on yourself as well. So if you're out and about and you realize I'm not going to be able to charge for quite a while and I'm getting down there, just go turn it on. Sure. And it'll conserve battery power. Okay. Now also with, in, now we're going to move to calendars. There's a couple of things with calendars that is new. One thing is um, it will show you events like flights or restaurants, which is nice. Which are found in mail. Reserva reservations that are yeah. found in mail, so right. So it sees it in mail, it's gonna show it in your calendar. calendar. Yep. And it is also you use Apple Maps to look up locations and traffic conditions to tell you how long will it take you to get somewhere. That's really cool. And um, we have here a screen grab so you're going to go to the Screenshots show you. album to yeah. find See it. See how easy that was for me to get there because yeah. they have an album now. <laughs> so this is what the screen will look like. Look at it. It says, under this meeting, traffic is light. Leave by 1145 to arrive on time. Right. So, so it'll you, constantly update that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have an address in your calendar mm -hmm. event, it will look at that and it'll say, oh, right. I better keep an eye on this and let her know when she needs to leave. So or that's pretty cool. I right. like that feature a lot. So the app fresher, app, app, app switcher, sorry. <laughs> if you double click, that's how you get that up. This is that um, feature that you brute can bring up to see all the apps that you have open. And so it's a little bit different. They used to be smaller, kind of stacked across like this. Now they call it like a little carousel look yeah, to them. Yeah, I think the contacts used to be across the top. Yep. They're now they, they were kind of oddly up there. Your your most recent contacts were at the top. Right. And now they've taken that out and put that in Surrey suggestion page that we showed you, which makes a lot more sense. Right. Um, so also you can still crash your apps. Oops. Oops. I pressed too hard. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very it's sensitive. You crash your apps just like normal. Right. That's how you permanently quit an app. Otherwise, your eyes open. And this is, of course, an easy way to go in between apps that you're using, um, but also to be able to completely quit them. And sure. then down at the bottom, we don't have it on right now. For some reason, it's not showing up. But down at the bottom is the handoff bar. So if you've got an app, if you're using the handoff feature that came out in iOS 8, um, the applications that you can hand off with will show up down here. Right. If you're one of those lucky people who gets to move from an Android to an iPhone, Apple iOS 9 has something great for you and it's called, it's called Move to iOS. It's an app you can download on your Android device and it will walk you through transferring to your iPhone, all your information. Um, it'll even, even put all of the apps that will also work on your iPhone that you've been using on your Android into your wish list on the App Store on your new oh, iPhone. Oh, so great. Yeah, so you can just go in once you've got it on there, you go into your iPhone, you go into the App Store, and all the apps that you used to use on your Android are in the, in the wish list, and you can just download them. And finally, finally come over to the Apple finally, world. Come to the brighter <laughs> side. Yep. So we've gone through all the new features of iOS 9, and you, um, we, I'm sure you want to update now. So there are two different ways you, you can do that. You can do it um, connected to Wi-Fi, and you can go into settings, into general, into software, and it will walk you through the steps to download. First right. download it and then install it. Got to be on Wi-Fi, right? Right. Yep. If you want to do a, a faster way, you can plug your phone into your computer and through the iTunes store, it works a lot quicker because you're right. not going over Wi-Fi. Right. It downloads it goes right computer from Apple first now. and then it, right, so. And uh, the models that can upgrade are a 4S iPhone or higher and an iPad 2 and higher. Right. So I think you should just download it and start having some fun like we have been on iOS 9. Right. Enjoy. Sing Sisters Tech Fit. And please subscribe to our channel.